Thank you, Tracy. Uh, today, there are approximately 56,000 school-age youth in Chicago who are not currently enrolled in school. I've called these young people our lost children, and I believe that it is our collective responsibility to find these children, re-engage them, and to get them back onto the path for success. The alternative for the future of these children, as individuals and as members of the, of the community, as well as members of the city of Chicago, is not one that we can sit back and wait to accept. Chicago Public Schools cannot ever give up on any one of our children. And we have made significant progress in the last three years to develop and execute an option school strategy. We've moved from offering a patchwork of alternative schools and programs for out of school and significantly off track students to a coordinated, coherent education strategy that provides quality options for students in need of a different setting to get them back on track to graduation and prepared for post-secondary life. This strategy includes three components. First, the expansion and diversification of the number of seats in new and existing quality education option schools and programs, particularly in underserved communities. Second, the establishment of a common high bar for quality option schools and programs. And third, a proactive approach to reaching out and to re-engaging students. The unmet need in this area remains enormous. In school year 2010-11, the district had just a little over 5,700 seats in option schools to serve a population of about 50,000. In order to meet increasing demand and to get more children back on a path to success, we issued an RFP for quality providers with track records of success in servicing off-track student populations. In addition, we work with our high school principals to service those children who are already enrolled in our high schools. I am recommending that the board authorize seven providers to create and expand programs that will generate an additional 2,500 quality seats for next year. This proposed growth includes expansion of the number of available seats at five current sites and the addition of seven new sites. We are diversifying the, the uh, group of programs to include half-day programs that offer individualized blended learning for students that are, who have to go to work or have family commitments, and full-day academies with programs for children, young people to gain the credits necessary and the skill accumulation. Some of these models also include early college models and programs with career and technical education pathways. I believe that a one-size-fits-all approach is not only ineffective, but it's counterproductive. I'm confident we are moving in the right direction with this strategy, transitioning from a patchwork of alternative schools to a coordinated comprehensive option school strategy is the only way to re-engage our lost children and to get them back on the path to success. This, um, this morning, we have representatives from Camelot and Pathways here, and two young people, Mr. Middleton and Mr. Alvarez, who would like to speak to us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Rashad Middleton. I'm a senior representing um, Pathways in Education. All right. Pathways is a really good school and alternative for students who have a hard time or have dropped out of school. It's helpful because of its flexible schedule. You're able to work at a relaxed pace, and the overall environment, along with the teachers, are comfortable to be around. Pathway also offers us uh, good opportunities and experiences. We recently took a trip to Colorado. We worked on a ranch. And we worked on a ranch, engaged in activities, socialized within a new environment, and we were able to earn service learning hours. It was one of the great experiences of my life. Job training, job opportunities, trips, college days, mock, mock interviews, and certain clubs are also offered throughout the year. Pathways has made me more mature and more aware of my future because of the independent study model that empowers me to take the time I need to complete my work while thinking about my future as well. The independent study model is what's working best for me. It is known that some people work fast and some work slow, but I feel most comfortable and confident when I'm able to work at my own pace and I know things can get done. I've been at Pathways since February 3rd and I've completed five credits within three months. That's definitely an achievement for me. Finally, Pathways has shown me that even though you make mistakes in life, that's what life's about. It's about second chances and that's what Pathways presented to me. Thank you. Thank you.
Good morning. My name is Ruben Alvarez, and uh, I'm representing Pathways as a graduate student. <clears throat> For the one year I was at Pathways, I met the most welcoming teachers and staff. Our teachers challenged us to understand the importance of school and working hard to get our diplomas. They took the time to help us when we were confused, in need, or simply just to get to know us better. They built the bridges and left it to us to walk across it. They urged us to use their first names, and to myself, I felt as though that they acknowledged that we were adults. The staff trusted us, the students, to take control of the school, making sure it is a challenging and welcoming environment. Students were allowed to choose how they learned, through either small group instructions, seminars, APEX online classes, or the traditional book work. The trust placed in us encouraged us to act responsibly, to show that we can balance what they've asked of us, that we are capable of graduating, and to go beyond the experience and excel in our education. I myself begin my first semester at Harold Washington College next week on June 4th. My class... <laughs> my classes will be English 101 and Calculus. In the fall, I will be taking 16 credit hours, and from there, I will be working towards an associate's degree in art. After that, I plan to transfer to DePaul University and major in creative writing, animation, and business. Oh, that's good. Pathways was my second chance, a chance to make my mistakes right, a chance to succeed. There was no tough guy act here. There was no bravado, just a single dedication, the dedication to a high school diploma. Pathways helped not just me, but many others. And right now, this board has a chance to help another 600 students who are in need of another chance. Thank you. Finally, Mr. President and members of the board, over the last year, the district has been moving toward a common accountability system for all schools, whether they are district, charter, or contract schools. Every Chicago public school, no matter the governance type, is expected to achieve at high standards. Historically, schools in Chicago had often been held to a different expectation because of a different contractual performance um, guidelines, to different commitments, and to different timing of the contractual cycle. It is with this in mind that over the last years, we have engaged with stakeholders from across Chicago to develop a common accountability system that holds all schools of all types to the same set of high expectations. In August 2013, this board voted into effect the school quality rating policy, which sought to unify our schools under a common framework. The updated set of metrics in the common accountability system will allow CPS to know which schools are making the mark and which schools require more intensive support and intervention. We are working aggressively to ensure that all of our schools are assessed using the school quality rating policy for the 14-15 school year. Having a common accountability system will allow us to make updated and more appropriate standards applicable to the diverse set of schools that we have across the city of Chicago. Moving forward, schools that do not show, um, do not sign on to the school quality rating policy will not be advanced to the board for consideration. That is why I'm requesting at this time that we remove for consideration the Allen Locke School from today's agenda. Allen Locke is a school that is up for renewal. We remain in con constant negotiations with the school at the present time, and I do not want to advance this item forward until the school agrees to the quality rating policy, just as several other of our schools have done already. In addition, I want to remind the board and the public that we will continue to be aggressive in calling out and then closing any low-performing charter school. In 2012, we introduced the charter school warning list. The warning list was designated to put charter schools on notice for low academic performance. Schools that remain on the warning list for two years consecutively will be closed. With the new common accountability system, any charter or contract school that is a tier five school will be on the warning list. This board voted to close two charter schools last year for low performance and those schools are currently in the process of phasing out. 
we cannot and we will not hesitate to close charter schools or contract schools moving forward who do not perform up to the standard of our common accountability system. Mr. President and members of the board, this concludes my remarks. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, any questions for uh, Barbara on her report? Very good. Thank you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, now for uh, announcements. Um, I would remind everybody that if you are uh, interested in scheduling uh, a time block for office hours with uh, board members, uh, please call the board office at 773-553-1600. Uh, we are pleased to offer this opportunity in addition to these uh, monthly meetings. Madam Secretary, please share the details of the next uh, board meeting. Thank you, Mr. President. The next board meeting will be held on June 25, 2014. Advanced registration will open at 8 a.m. Monday, June 16, 2014, and close on Friday, June 20 at 5 p.m. or until all slots are filled, whichever is first. If anyone has any questions about this process, please contact the board office for our assistance. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, we will now proceed with uh, today's uh, public participation session, uh, and I believe President Lewis would like to address us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So the first thing I would like to do is say that I would like to commend Tracy on her work in OS4. It has been an extremely positive experience working with her. So I know you're used to me coming up here talking about all the bad stuff. Um, and, and what I would like to say, though, is that what makes it work is this notion of collaboration between the administration, the teachers, the staff, and, because let's, let's not forget our paraprofessionals and our clinicians. One, one of the things that I can tell you, though, is that, of course, people have different experiences with it. I have one member that thinks it's the best thing since sliced bread and another member that says it's horrible. But if you look at the issues surrounding it, it's their relationships with their administrations that make that happen. But I do know that Tracy is working extremely hard to do this. And I think, Jesse, your question about can this be an alternative to turnaround is absolutely, I was sitting over there going, yes. Was that Carlos? Was that Carlos? Carlos? I thought Jesse said it. Oh. <laughs> All right, sorry, Carlos. I don't okay. have your phone number, though. So we're going to work on that. Um, so, so I think that is extraordinarily important, and I would hope that we are continuing to look at OS4 as a way to really improve schools from the ground up. It's a very positive experience. So, and I'd like to thank the fact that Tracy is so available to work with, and you know, you can't beat that. Um, secondly, the option schools I think are extraordinarily important. And the fact that we have 58,000 children that really should be in our district is something that I truly believe that if we had the appropriate wraparound services in our schools to begin with, we would have less and less need for that. So I think I would love to see a real plan to how we start working on that. And that's something I would like to do and work with you. And because we have to also look at what causes the children to leave our schools. And, 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 and to be honest with you, school closings, turnarounds, these are parts of the policies that actually lead to this. So I think we need to have some analysis around it, and we need to just dive deep into those data. And the other thing I wanted to say is about the school quality ratings is that the issues of support, which I want to go back to what Tracy is doing, support and not punish. Mm -hmm support and not punish. We are so punitive in our system. And I honestly believe that part of that is due to, one, we have budget priorities that we have to look at. I know you guys are going to be making some decisions. There's some of these budget items. You've got $1.3 million going to TFA. I don't know why we're paying headhunters for teachers that aren't even qualified, quite frankly. When when I know that, um, was it Pathways or, or Camelot that's getting 1.3 million, there's a place to, to put that 1.3 million someplace else. 
I really honestly believe we have an option here. We have the, the ideas here to change the status quo of the punishment piece moving in another direction. We're working with Arthi to, to really consider changing that discipline code. Looking at, when you're talking about the achievement of black males, we have this option to work harder to keep them in our schools and not have them on the streets. That is so important. We want to work with you on that. Um, but I would say that we have some challenges ahead budget-wise. We need to continue our conversations about how to handle those, but I am so concerned that slashing budgets at schools will put us in a position that we cannot offer our students the things they really need. And that one mandate after another, even though they sound great, we have to really have some clear priorities around that. And that also goes with our facilities. We have to understand Who's next in line to get their roof done? Or their, I mean, I know you've seen the pictures floating around the internet of Gale School, but capital budgets, the facilities plan, we really have to have some idea of how that works for everyone in the city. So I hope you guys think about that when you're doing that and understand that we are also here to help and work with you. These are areas that not only not only will we improve our schools, but we will improve our confidence in our schools. We need to have the ability to move forward, to work with families, to convince them that they need to send their children to Chicago public schools because they can get an excellent education there. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. You know, thank, uh, thank you for working with us, and uh, we look forward to keep working with you, and you're looking great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Dave. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I'll uh, proceed with the speakers list. Um, the first group is from Hanson Park, and their designated speakers will be speaker number one, George Ramirez, followed by speaker number two, Margarita Vasquez. And then we'll move on to the Foundations College group, and they have identified a designated speaker um, as speaker number five, Aisha Jakes. Last call for George Ramirez. As I call your name, I would ask that you please stage to the right of that blue column there. <laughs> Mr. Ramirez, please. Good morning. Good morning. My name is George Ramirez. I'm here on behalf of the parents and students from Hanson Park Elementary School. Our, our enrollment has been consistently growing over the last few years. And last year, with the closing of schools, we had an increase of approximately 400 students. That puts us at just over 1,600 students. In 2005, CPS leased a building across the street from our main building that was built in 1901 and was not adequate to serve as a learning environment. This current lease will be expiring in June of 2015. The building conditions are poorly and deteriorating and is currently serving approximately 400 children who are being critically impacted on a daily basis. Not only is it affecting their education but also their health. The structural deterioration of the building is noticeable Walls are cracked and the paint is chipping away. And there is water damage in the ceilings and walls. That is causing mold and bacterial buildup. There are only five operational bathrooms to support 400 students. We have hot water pipes that are exposed all over the building, including inside classrooms that are not insulated and are a burn hazard to our children. The electrical system hasn't been updated in years to the point that it is unable to sustain a regular window air conditioning unit. These conditions have forced our teachers and parents to purchase fans to provide cooling for the rooms, but there is no noticeable change in temperatures due to the extreme heat that are experienced on a daily basis. 
As an example, my daughter comes home every day complaining that it is so hot that she feels that they're getting dehydrated. They have to take water breaks three to five times a day. Mr. Ramirez, excuse me, can you please conclude? Yes, uh, she gets headaches, stomach aches because of the heat. It is because of these reasons that we are requesting that CPS takes consideration of our kids' education and their well-being and please support us with an annex on the same grounds of our main campus where we have enough land to attach it and that will provide our kids the environment they deserve to strive in their educational needs. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Ramirez, if I may, yes. have you been in contact with our facilities people or somebody from your school uh, been in contact with our facilities people? Uh, yes, they've, okay. they've, they've been in contact. It, uh, CPS knows about this. Our, uh, our actual director, our principal, has uh, sent various notices about the conditions of the building and nothing has been uh, done. It's actually been, this has been done going on for years now. Okay. This is not an issue that, that's just being presented. Okay, I'm gonna come out and see your school. Sure. Okay. We appreciate it. Thank you. Our next speaker, please. Aisha Jakes. As she approaches the microphone, the next set of speakers will be speaker number three, Maria Coronel, followed by speaker number 16, Alicia Aguirre, please. Good morning, my name is Aisha Jakes and I'm a parent representing Foundations College Prep. Um, I have transferred my children from the north side to the south side, I'm both attending Chicago Public Schools and I've noticed a drastic difference in the quality of the education and the attention given to the whole student. Foundations College Prep has satisfied the hunger that many Southside parents are so eager to fulfill. Foundations has integrated social emotional wellness into a curriculum that meets students where they are yet challenges them to grow and become critical thinkers. To summarize, these are the tools necessary to advance to be a, a better student throughout college and beyond and to have a, a just be a success in life. So thank you so much for, for your time and allowing me to speak. Thank you. Our next speaker, please, Maria Coronel. Hola, buenos días. Mi nombre es María Coronel. Um, tengo dos hijos, uh, uno de 11 y uno de, de seis años. Um, um, van en Leo, Leo School. My name is María Coronel. I have two students at uh, Lewis School of Excellence. One is in fifth grade, the other one is in first grade. 11 and five, five years old, each one. Uh, para mí este, este año ha sido un cambio muy bueno para mí, mis hijos, especialmente para mi hijo el mayor, porque ha subido mucho sus calificaciones. Um, uh, también este, um, su, sus notas han subido mucho. Antes no le he echado muchas ganas a uh, sus tareas, pero um, ahora es más responsable. Um, tiene muchos, tiene las maestras son muy pacientes uh, con, con mi hijo. Además, los, los voluntarios de CDR también los animan mucho cuando están bajos en sus materias. Los voluntarios es, y las maestras les dan atención especial antes. Um, él iba un poco bajo de sus materias. Uh, for me, this has been a year of uh, good changes for my children. Before, the eldest uh, was not very dedicated to the homework. Now, he is more responsible. I see very patient teachers at the school, also the volunteers. When the students have uh, problems uh, with a subject, they receive special attention. For that, in my case, I see a great difference. Ms. Coronel, excuse me, can you please conclude? Um, los maestros son muy atentos con, 
con, un, con uno como padres cuando vamos a, y le preguntamos información. También los, la oficina tiene muy buena atención con los padres cuando entramos con preguntas. La directora también tiene muy buen modo con los padres. Yo veo que se asegura que todos los, los padres traten por igual, incluso a nosotros como latinos. Antes eso no era así. Teachers and the office, the school office, are very attentive with us, the parents, when we look for information. The same happens with the principal that treats everyone with the same attention, including us Latinos. Uh, this wasn't the same before. Thank you, Ms. Coronel. Um, the next speaker, Alicia Aguirre, will not be speaking. We'll move on, Mr. President, with the next speaker, and that'll be speaker number four. Tamara Snyder, followed by speaker number six, Alan Fritzler, speaker number 51, Stacy McAuliffe, and then speaker number eight, Jill Wold, please. Good morning. My name is Tamara Snyder. My experience with the AUSL turnaround has been great. I was excited about the change. The former situation was not conducive for my daughter. I was one of the few parents, <clears throat> excuse me, that was for the turnaround. Other O'Keefe parents asked me to come down to CPS to protest last year, but I said no. Although I sympathized with the teachers that were losing their jobs, I wanted the best <coughs> educational experience for my daughter. I noticed the difference immediately. Before the school year started, the new O'Keefe principal and staff were knocking on doors and introducing themselves, making their presence known. I noticed that they were more transparent. This means everything to myself and my daughter. My daughter has an IEP, and this year she has a special education team that are making sure her IEP is implemented and that they help her learn the way that she learns. It is truly an individualized to her needs. The staff at O'Keefe are working with her very hard and even give her an extra hour every Tuesday after school. This year at O'Keefe, we have a PAC and LSE in place, which I hold seats on both. We also have extracurricular activities. I participated in drama and theater, Girl Scouts, and completed Orion's Mind Tutoring Program. I urge parents to try this. I understand the fear of the unknown. If this turnaround at the AS, if this ASUL turnaround had not occurred, we wouldn't see the good things that are happening at O'Keefe School of Excellence. Thank you. Thank you. Our, Thank next, you our next speaker, please, Alan Fritzler. Hi, actually, Stacy McAuliffe with the Illinois Network of Charter Schools. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, uh, wanted to speak briefly about the school mentioned earlier, Elaine Locke, that's not up for consideration for renewal today. I think it's important uh, when mentioning that school to note that it is, by any by any measure, one of the top performing elementary schools in the city of Chicago. And we look forward to speaking on its behalf when it is up for renewal. 100% um, behind the, um, the notion of, of strong accountability for all charter schools, as is Elaine Locke. And it's an important balancing act to um, balance both strict accountability and consistency, as well as charter autonomy. So look forward to speaking specifically on Elaine Locke um, when it is considered. Today, we also wanted to speak about two of the schools that are up for consideration for approval, Great Lakes and Foundations. You just heard from a mother speaking on behalf of Foundations. Both of those schools represent uh, a true essence of the charter model, innovation. Foundations College Prep really tries to reimagine the use of talent, time, and technology in schools. That means flexible scheduling. That means a variety of class sizes and models. It means a variety of career paths and um, roles for teachers in the building. And it means the strategic use of blended learning and flipped classrooms to truly engage students. Great Lakes Academy, which you considered in previous um, board meetings as well, is looking to base its success on a set of anchors of success. Um, this includes 20% more time in class and instruction than a traditional CPS um, average school. It includes um, uh, community and parent engagement. It includes a unique um, PE class that is both focused on character strength and physical fitness. And both of these schools truly represent innovation um, and the, the heart of the charter model. Ms. McAuliffe, excuse me, can you please conclude? Yes. Thank you. 
Both schools have deep and broad relationships in their communities and strong support, as well as families who have signed up and uh, are eagerly anticipating becoming part of the founding classes of those schools. Um, we urge you to uh, approve both schools, um, and uh, families in, in Chicago are counting on it. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Stella, I, I do want you to confirm that Ms. McAuliffe was registered to speak. That's yes, correct. sir. She is speaker number 51 on the list. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, the next speaker, Jill Wool, is not in attendance and will not be addressing the board. That's speaker number eight. Moving on to the next group of speakers uh, for the Gresham uh, Elementary School, they have identified two designated speakers, um, and that will be speaker number nine, please, Tiffany Walker, followed by speaker number 14, Gregory Clements. After the Gresham group, uh, we'll proceed with speaker number 10, Emiliano Araujo, followed by speaker number 11, Janice Reynolds, and then speaker number 12, Phyllis Porter. Good morning. Uh, my name is Tiffany Walker. I am a Gresham alumnus, parent of three, and I'm also the public relations officer for Gresham Parents, Students, and Community United for Change. Um, I would like to appeal with you for just a few short moments. I have submitted to the board members Gresham's ISAT yearly review. If you all could take a look at that and not me as we go through the numbers really quickly, I would appreciate that. Um, when Dr. Brown came to Gresham School in 2004 as principal, Gresham School was at 37.7% um, in students uh, meeting or exceeding state standards according to the Illinois report card uh, report. Um, from 2004, we jumped 10 percentage points to 48.6 in 2005-2006. From there, we dipped two percentage points and was put on probation where we wound up, wound up at 56.9%. Uh, for the next couple of years, we dropped a total of six, well, 0.6 percentage points. Now, by the time we get to 2010, 2011, we're made it to the level two for the first time in Gresham School history, Mr. President. Uh, that is 64.1%. The disruption came in 2011, 2012, where actions were taken against Gresham School as they saw that we were inclining and not declining in our scores. Um, Gresham School, the first action that you guys decided to take against us was the closure of Gresham. The second was the co-location. The third was the welcoming school for the closure school, Morgan Elementary. And the fourth was a turnaround for Gresham School. Now you say you have this OS4 program. If that's the case, why is it that if you say Gresham is, the, is on the lowest, well, it's part of the lowest in the OS4, why, why aren't we, um, why didn't you give us an opportunity to become a part of the OS4 program is my question. If we are the, one of the lowest schools, why did we not get the invitation? I will wrap it up. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, last but not least, uh, I am requesting three things. That the vote against Gresham School on April 23, 23rd be nullified um, in regards to the documentations that you have in front of you. Um, the second would be no more actions taken against Gresham School. Just please leave us alone. We are increasing. And the third would be to give us the resources. You give the resources to other schools, but you have not extended the hand to give them to Gresham School. Thank and you, last Ms. but not least, I, will, I, am, I am almost done. We have formally taken action against CPS and have filed a complaint with the NAACP. Thank you, Ms. Walker. You Next speaker, please. Gregory Clements. Greetings to the greetings to the distinguished board. My name is Gregory Clements. I am a grandparent of two grandsons at Gresham Elementary. I also the Scout Master of the Boy Scouts. I just have a couple of questions. Uh, since the school was designated as a, as a turn turnaround. We'd like to know if the following uh, programs that we have initiated over the years will be continued. Climbers, Talking Tuesday, which is a, a weekly forum for parents and community members. Mentor programs for new teachers. Our Girl Scouts, our Boy Scouts, our Science Clubs, Girls on the Run. I set rewards for the highest achievers. Yearly bicycle giveaways for reading comprehension scores for eight, going on for eight years. 
quarterly perfect attendance monetary awards, pause, behavior incentives, teachers uh, monthly perfect attendance well, monthly monetary awards, million merit parent movement, which is also a community parent partnership program, gyms, girls empowering, girls empowering and mentoring solutions, and your Mother's Day luncheons, and your Father's Day luncheons, uh, law and ceasefire pro partnerships, University of Illinois Health Parent Partnerships, Special Olympics, Kids College Strides Academy, Modern, Modern Dance Troupe, Sports Team, Basketball and Volleyball, Urban Gateway Theater Performing Arts, and the Taste of Gresham. Okay, I will really provide the remainder of my time to Ms. Joshua. Good morning. Uh, thank Excuse you. me, ma'am. Yes. Your name, please? Attorney Rose Joshua. I am the president of Mr. Chicago. Mr. President. Excuse me? Ma'am, you're supposed to register to speak to us. I'm going to let you speak. But, yes, I but, did. But you're not registered on our list. I'm sorry. But you can go ahead and speak anyway. Go ahead. Yes, I did uh, register. You're not on the list. I'm sorry. But go ahead. Okay. Um, my name is Rose Joshua. I am president of the Chicago Southside NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And our mission is to improve the political, education, social, economic equality of all persons, and especially African Americans. I am here today because parents at Walter Gresham filed a complaint with the NAACP. And as a part of what we do at the NAACP is we investigate cases that are assigned to us. We do not give legal advice. And what we do is collect data and make recommendations to the general counsel of the NAACP to file uh, legal action. But what I'm here today to ask you to do this, I need for the board to allow the NAACP Chicago Southside to do an investigation, 15 days. I need 15 days to do an investigation in order for you to reconsider your decision to turn around Walter Gresham. I thank you very much. Oh, and another thing, as a part of the investigation, I'm going to need some information from the board. Now, any other way, I would have to go through the Freedom of Information Act, but I would like cooperation from the board. Thank you, to, Ms. Joshua. To review the school improvement grants as it relates Our to Our next speaker, progression. please. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Am I able to get that? Ma'am, thank you, please. Thank you. Our next speaker, please, speaker number 10. Emiliano Arahu. Buenos días, señores. Mi nombre es Emiliano Araujo. Soy padre, uno, soy padre de un estudiante de Patrick Henry School. El motivo de mi presencia es la preocupación que tenemos. Todos los padres estamos aquí para que, para que consideren una petición como una prioridad para, uno, para su agenda. Good morning, my name is Emiliano Araujo and I'm a parent of a student at Patrick Henry Elementary. The reason for my presence here is a concern that we have as parents. We are here for you to consider our petition as a priority in your agenda. Patrick Henry cuenta como, oh, ah, perdón, así como la creación de una nueva escuela selectiva Obama High School. I want you to consider our petition just how the creation of the new selective enrollment Obama High School is to you. Patrick Henry cuenta con solo pre-kinder hasta, hasta sexto grado. Es una escuela que está en un, un nivel académico 1 y que ha luchado para llegar y lograr llegar hasta ahí. La escuela que, se le, que, se, que le pertenece como séptimo y octavo grado es Marshall Median School, que sufrió recortes de instalaciones desde ahí. Cada año por año sufre de una posible cierre de esta escuela, ya que tiene un nivel académico bajo y un bajo número de estudiantes. Patrick Henry only goes up to sixth grade and it's a level one school that has struggled and fought to achieve that. The school that belongs to our kids for seventh and eighth grade is Marshall Middle School, who suffered facility cuts and from there on each year suffers of possible, possible school closure having a low academic level and a low student population. Aún así, ustedes le exigen a nuestros hijos un nivel académico alto 
en uno de los grados más importantes, que es séptimo grado para la high school. Yet, you require our children to perform high in academic standards in one of the most important grade levels, which is seventh grade for high school. Mr. Rajo. Yo les pregunto, Mr. Rahu, ¿cómo se sentirían ustedes como padres Mr. tener Rahu, todos los días? Excuse me, can you please conclude? Yes. Thank you. Esta, esta lucha, ese beneficio para nuestra comunidad, que merece una estabilidad de aprendizaje. Esto, por esto, estamos unidos para solicitarle que consideren que agreguen séptimo y octavo grado a Patrick Henry, pero implementándole con recursos de calidad para merecer un nivel uno. The fight is, it is, a, it is a fight to benefit our community, to deserve stability in learning. That's why we're united in our request for you to consider adding seventh and eighth grade at Patrick Henry, but implementing it with quality resources to maintain its level one. Thank you. Our next speaker, please. Speaker number 11, Gracias. Shanice Reynolds. Good morning. My name is Shanice Reynolds. I am a parent. I come here today because it has been a year since Garvey was removed from the closing list. Um, it would be nice to see you all there at Garvey so you can see how well we are performing and how good Garvey is still standing. But yet we still have budget cuts. We have lost three positions, as well as we do not have a librarian. And we have a beautiful, as you all have been to Garvey Library. And we do not have a librarian. We have a kindergarten teacher shuffling through her full day kindergarten class to come over and assist with library. We're asking that you revisit the budget for Marcus Garvey and consider giving us more funds as we understand that Foundations Charter is moving into the Garvey community and is getting over $300,000 in funding. Yet several schools in the Roseland community and Washington Heights have closed due to underutilized, not enough students. Well, we have red X's over a lot of our buildings in our community, so no one is moving in. So Foundations is gonna pull students once again from Marcus Garvey, from Julian, Morgan Park, from Whistler, from Dunn. It's gonna pull students from Finger, and as we know, Finger is already at the end of their turnaround funds. But yet we allow a sixth through 12th grade charter school to come into our community and starve our schools once again and put us right back in the situation that we were in a year ago. Ms. Reynolds, we're Ms. Asking, Reynolds, excuse me, Ms. Reynolds, can you please conclude? Yes. Thank you. We're asking that you consider the budget for Marcus Garvey, take all foundations charter from the Roseland and Washington Heights community, as well as the three turnaround schools. I love what you said about OS4 and how you worked with the principals and the teachers to turn around that school and for that growth. How about we consider those three turnaround schools for OS4? Thank as you, you Ms. Reynolds. With the other schools. Thank you. Thank you. Last call for Phyllis Porter. <laughs> 